just so many sprayers. We should have bought the You are now watching Farming with Duffy Ag. Well, we are rolling. Stopped, got some sleep last night. Um, it's 7.20 now, been actually rolling for like the last hour, hour and a half. But, stepping across New York still, big storm. Like, pull it up on the radar, it goes all the way across New York into Massachusetts. So it's the rain we needed at home. Um, yeah, to keep, we were getting dry. So it will give the grass that we've cut a good jump and it will keep the corn growing. That seeding, uh, the landowner of the seeding actually texted me and said, I see we're in a drought condition now. So I guess he's got to text me more about that when we're dry and we get some rain. So we have, let me uh, switch over to it. We have 18 hours and 35 minutes to go. 1,232 miles. Just a little step across uh, America. So uh, if I see anything cool, I'll get back to you. But otherwise, we're just going to be stepping west. Well, that's a statement. Maple View Farms. We are rolling across Ohio. Yeah, Yanko's having a party. Long way to go. We have 800 miles still to go. We did stop at Culver's. Manko had some cheese curds and uh, well, I'll keep stepping along. It actually turned into a beautiful day. So at home, we got a bunch of rain today, um, which is much needed, but now it makes me feel like I should be at home doing crop work, but I know it's not in a place where uh, we could do that. So we'll keep stepping. Not much adventure or action this trip, but we're in an in and out mission, so minimal farm tour and hanging out because we do have to get back and get going. It's been a very uneventful trip, other than fuel prices, but we're coming back down. We're under six bucks. So coming across, um, we just went through Elkhart, Indiana. So time change is going to be coming up that'll be cool we'll get in an hour I think it was all about it yeah long trip but definitely gaining on it I came in a little hot that pump wouldn't work and so I came over here and then this pump wouldn't work so I had to go in you don't get very much with 150 bucks 25 gallons damn welcome to Chicago what a nice place. We've only been sitting in traffic for quite a while. Yeah, I love it. I freaking love it. We were running at a good pace, but uh, you get people like this that cut right in front of you. And then they sneak up a few lanes and then cut back in and make it a mess. So It is 7.23 central time, so a lot of traffic still for that. Holland uh, round ballers. The yellow. The yellow just doesn't do it for me. Update on those round ballers. So Kevin Hansen, who works for Case New Holland, as far as uh, it's grass production prototype stuff, so balers, windrowers, stuff like that, he does that. Well, I think mostly windrowers. Self-propelled windrowers. He informed me that those complete yellow um, round balers are for the Canadian market. And the yellow with the red panels are for the U.S. market. So those yellow, complete yellow ones are going to Canada. And the red one, that's a U.S. one still. So I think overseas they're complete yellow as well. I don't, I guess it's just how they paint them or it's, how, it's a whole different structure of it. Maybe I'll get some more information on it at some time, and I will tell you that. Well, stepping across um, 
I-94 through Minnesota, or through Wisconsin, headed to Minnesota. And, uh, yeah, making decent time. Got, a uh, 168 miles left to go, which ain't too bad. We're running way behind schedule, but that's kind of the nature of these road trips. You don't plan anything out, because when you do, everything comes apart. Well, the ankle likes partying and whatnot, so. Alrighty, well, I'll probably see you guys when we cross the Mississippi, and it's been a, been a long time since I've crossed up here, so usually I'm crossing down in uh, La Crosse or Dubuque, and then, yeah, we've done that quite a few times on the channel, so. Oh yeah, good old Mississippi. Good things happen when you go west of it. We've always had a lot of fun, so. Let's see, this chipped windshield is all completely cracked. I'm ready for a new one on Monday. I wish I got it done sooner. Rolling along Minnesota. Hanko's ready to get out. I'm ready to get out. We are 72 miles away. Made up some time. Yeah. Minnesota is beautiful. I know it's wet out here. And I know everybody's had a lot of struggles. Same as everywhere, I guess, this year. Um, crops look pretty good, though, for how much struggles there has been out here. A little yellow, a lot of late stuff, but that's... You can't control Mother Nature, so... I'm ready to get loaded and start heading east. Rolling through small town USA. What do we got? Ten something. 1066. A little bin set up. Yeah. A Casey's. We got everything you need, right? And it started raining. If you can believe it, we're in Minnesota and it's raining. So, yeah, that seems like a reoccurring thing out here, but. We are in Clara City, Minnesota. Look at this operation going on here. Next level sign. That's always a plus. There's an older uh, quad track in there. A lot of diggers. Clara City Farmer Elevator. So that big ring there, when they need overflow, it all goes in there. They got another one up here that's smaller, and then uh, it, they stockpile it. Right, a operation here. We're going right here.
And it's raining. We are loaded up now. We're just gonna do a little drive through of the lot. So I got, they got some diggers, some speed tillers. Quite a few hardy sprayers here. Um, that is a big sprayer right there. That is a really big sprayer. Older ones, Commander 400s. Look at that, duels on it. Yeah, that, that's how you know you're big time. But what they do a lot of is uh, sugar beets. And like Michigan, they have sugar beets. And we saw some of that action there. But this is a sugar beet harvester. So it goes down the row, it pulls it up, it pushes it up, it cleans it. That's pretty wild. So these are pull type ones. And then it st stacks them to a certain degree and then they unload them. Something I haven't seen. Well, safety pull builds the crop shuttle which is pretty freaking wild um they got this thing here so it is a tracked one and that's for moving them to the edge of the fields and that set of rollers is pretty wild too what are those summers summers rollers that's peanuts that's pretty cool i didn't know they did peanuts out this way that's gotta be peanuts. Huh. That's neat. Some more sugar beet harvesters. I think he said there's 11,000 acres of sugar beets out here. 11,000? Maybe that was right. And they said last year was a crazy ridiculous year as far as how much they actually harvested. So sugar beet toppers. So that goes along, tops the sugar beet before they harvest it. I think this is the right terminology. Somebody who grows sugar beets, tell me if I'm wrong. But it tops it off so it's like a mower. And then these come along and actually pick them. Choose. And they got some grain augers. So we're at... Weirda? Weirda Implements in Clara City, um, Minnesota. I don't know why I say Minnesota. <laughs> it just comes natural. Here we go. Navigator 6200. Oh, everybody's going to get excited over this one. Not that one, the white. Alrighty, I got to get out and actually film this one just to get. So, Evan, who's been on the channel, I used to spray corn for him, and he had a white with a hardy. So, this might be sentimental to him. But duels on the sprayer, pretty freaking wild. That is a rig. Oh, got the double weight set up on it. The new sugar beet harvester. Oh. Alrighty, I better get down the road. We got a long freaking way to go. We should have bought the little one. I know you all wanted to watch it because of the thumbnail. Oh, wild. Pioneer sign. American since 1926, Zimmer Seed Farm. Look at it go. Little 20 or 15 inch row? I think that was 20 inch row corn. Digger in a basket? Just the digger. We are seeing everything out here. So it's sprinkled just enough, but they're still out here running. Here's a sprayer. Is that 8320 nice sprayer that is a freaking operation right here lsw's on the 9r they got a 9rt or a 9t on the rollers they got even more stuff over there they got so much stuff here's an og tile plow hell yeah brother stopped here at buddy boys fine barbecue i got a little a little wild here so I got all sorts of stuff. I'm gonna give it a try. Burnt ends, mashed uh, potato salad, mac and cheese. They had like everything. So 
wasn't really sure so i got literally everything and we're not going to starve tonight but sprayer is on here good everything is tight i did say that's not going anywhere before we left i did end up putting a ratchet strap across there because they had some zip ties on and uh i was a little nervous that zip ties are aren't really rated for the speed uh, that we we run so did put that across otherwise should be good but i'm gonna eat some food with yanko and then we gotta keep going we got 23 mile 23 hours to drive still and i'll explain a little bit more of why we bought a sprayer halfway across the us of a like so on point i've only ate so far the brisket mac and cheese burnt ends potato salad yeah we're you starving tonight hey I think there's more interesting people, but fire. So if you're here, if you're driving through, stop and get yourself some barbecue. Stopped here. Hickston truck stop in Hickston, Wisconsin. Well, there's two 6Ms. Well, no, there's 6Rs actually sitting back there, so maybe I should just go switch loads and call it good. But 528 for fuel, that's almost the cheapest we've seen, I think. Nico can correct me. I think we were at 518. We saw one time. I don't think it was a fluke, but yeah. Getting better. Not overfill. With the big pumps, they overfill quick. We're going to put quite a bit of fuel in here and we're going to keep moving. Love to get down past Chicago at night here so we don't have to deal with it in the day, even though it's going to be Saturday tomorrow. Got a lot of running to do. Yep. Loaded. 165 at 31 gallons. Oh. Alrighty. I'm gonna keep going. Go inside. Probably use the bathroom. Get something to drink. Get back going. Yeah. Across the road from quite a friggin' operation over there. Small town America. Big town uh, ag. Well, why did the farm buy a sprayer halfway across the US? I guess you'll just have to stay tuned and watch the next video. I will explain the whole dynamic of why I just drove 1,500 miles to pick up a sprayer when there's plenty of sprayer dealers in between. So, appreciate you guys watching though. I'll see you guys on the next video. Have a good one.